Whether it's fast approaching deadlines, major assignments, or an unhappy boss, we all experience stress. This video will explain the mechanisms of the stress response and the general adaptation syndrome. This video was created and narrated by myself, Heather Tunks, and it was created for PS 263 Biopsychology at Wilfrid Laurier University. Let's begin with looking at the nervous system. There are two divisions of the nervous system, which include the central nervous system, which is comprised of the brain and spinal cord, and the peripheral nervous system, which is essentially everything else. Let's focus on the peripheral nervous system, which connects the brain and spinal cord to the rest of the body. It has two divisions, which include the somatic nervous system, which is comprised of voluntary muscle, and the autonomic nervous system, which is comprised of involuntary muscles such as the heart and lungs. The autonomic nervous system can be further divided into the sympathetic nervous system, which controls the fight or flight response, and the parasympathetic nervous system, which controls the rest and digest systems. Well, what exactly is stress? Well, a researcher named Hans Style pondered that very same question in the 1950s. Hans noticed that many illnesses had the same symptoms, including increased heart rate, loss of appetite, fatigue, and an increased immune response. What Hans inferred was the General Adaptation Syndrome, or GAS for short. He defined stress as the non-specific response of the body to any demand made upon it. He also defined it as events that are interpreted as being stressful. So how does the General Adaptation Syndrome work? Basically, when an individual is stressed or encounters a stressful situation, they undergo the alarm stage, followed by the resistance stage, and then finally the exhaustion state. In the alarm stage, the adrenal glands release three hormones, which include epinephrine, which stimulates the sympathetic nervous system for emergency activity, aldosterone, which maintains a normal blood volume and salt balance, and cortisol, which increases blood glucose for energy. Resistance stage, sympathetic nervous system activity decreases and the adrenal glands continue to release hormones such as cortisol. Basically, your body attempts to adapt to the current stress by decreasing activity and conserving energy. In the exhaustion stage, the nervous and immune systems no longer have the energy to sustain themselves. Fatigue and other symptoms are very apparent. Today's society has truly evolved and we have gone from a predominantly fight or flight type of stress to a very chronic stress environment. We have transitioned from a predominantly sympathetic nervous system controlled stress to more chronic stress stemming from our modern day lifestyle. Chronic or prolonged stress is maintained by the hypothalamic pituitary axis. It all begins in the hypothalamus. Basically, the hypothalamus releases a hormone which goes to the anterior pituitary and causes that to release ACTH. ACTH then goes to the adrenal gland and causes it to release cortisol. Cortisol acts on the body and increases metabolic activity, blood sugar, alertness. So what really is the point in all this? Will the amount and duration of stress have different effects? If you have too little stress, you tend to be switched off, tired, and not alert enough to do activity. If you have too much stress, you tend to not be able to function. And if you're within the good zone, you tend to have an ideal amount of stress that can help you get things done. So how should we be managing our stress levels so that we're not chronically stressed? Things like social support, meditation, exercise, finding a hobby, and maintaining a good balance in your life are really good strategies to help maintain an appropriate stress level. So at the end of the day, we really just need the right type of stress in order to function at our best. We can accomplish this through incorporating appropriate time management, taking a break when you need one, and seeking assistance when everything just seems too overwhelming. At the end of the day, it's not stress that kills us, but it's our reaction to it. So try to live life with a calm mind and keep riding the waves. Created using Powtoon.